I think that fashion's gone full circle and as we all know fashion goes in, in cycles and right now we're experiencing a cycle that seems to have gone back to a bygone era which is kind of like um, the period that I'm most attracted to is the, is the vintage era, it's the retro, it's the, it's the America that we, we grew up in England that we loved. Growing up in England in the 1970s with the, the, the mods and the rockers and the Teds and I was obviously on the, the rocker side of the fence. You know, I knew rockers and I knew mods and I knew skinheads. But all of those factions at that time were all pretty much the same background. Working class blue collar kids coming from the same council estates. But what they did is they saved up all their wages for many months to buy whatever it was that they were wearing, whether it be a leather jacket and a BSA, or a tonic suit, or a drape suit for a teddy boy. And you know, those, those outfits actually took a lot of time and planning to get together. And so when they were going on these big runs, say down to Brighton, believe me, the teddy boy was there doing his hair, and the skinhead was there making sure his laces were laced up properly, and the mod was making sure that he didn't have any buttons missing on his jacket before he got on his Lamberetta, and before the rocker got on his BSA and went down to Brighton before the fights, they made sure that they looked good. <laughs> J.S. Sloan's uh, name originates from two different sources, the J being from Joanna Kuno and the S being from Smuddy Smith. And the Sloan actually is taken from a, a very affluent square in London's Chelsea district, which borderlines Belgravia and South Kensington, and actually just a little bit close to King's Road, where in the 60s, and right up through the 70s, um, uh, sort of the higher echelons of fashion would meet there and buy their clothes and sit and drink in the coffee shops. And it goes back to, you know, Mick Jagger and Brian Jones and all these type of people buying clothes from that area. So the Sloan, actually, there was a nickname, uh, a term for people that hung around in this area called Sloan Rangers, and I thought that would be suitable to use. One thing that I think's missing, that I really miss, it's going to maybe, say, the baker's and buying a loaf of bread off the guy that you've known made that bread, that he's kneaded that dough and he sells you that bread and he hands you that bread and goes, this is the best bread you've got. You can't do that in a mole. The sense of pride with small businesses, which I love, is that the person is, is passionately involved in what they do. That's what I feel like I've done with this company. We've taken the old school formula of all the pomades of, and all over the world that I've been traveling for 30 odd plus years, wearing pomades, cutting hair, being on stage. I wanted to take that structure using the old school formulas and try and make a one pomade that would cover all those. Something that was old school, something for the gentleman, something that looked good, smelled good, smelled clean, but then bring it up to date because today's modern man would certainly want to wash it out. My grandfather didn't, he probably had the same grease in there for months. And most of it was probably from his car engine.